Okay, so in the second part of this overview, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the concurrency hazards you need to be aware of to avoid. And uh, we'll probably cover that today. And then probably next time on Wednesday, we'll talk about when to use streams, under what circumstances is a stream a worthwhile thing to use, and also when not to use them. Half the battle in almost anything in life is knowing when not to do something as well as to when to do something. So we'll talk about both pieces of that. And sometimes it's pretty clear if you know when to use it, when not to use it, but sometimes there's some subtleties that may surprise you. And the key thing to remember is that Java streams really aren't meant to use in every situation. And so there's certain cases where they are really good, other places where it's not worth it. Luckily, it's so easy to, uh, to make a parallel stream that you can get your program working and then try it and see if it actually makes a difference. And if not, you just revert back trivially to a sequential stream and there's often not much more you need to do. So we'll talk a little bit about concurrency hazards. What the heck is a concurrency hazard? A concurrency hazard is something that goes wrong in your program when you start to run it concurrently or in parallel. I'm using the word concurrency hazard to also discuss parallel problems too. So the biggest single problem that you're likely to run across if you're unlucky is your program will have race conditions. And that again, we've talked about that, that occurs when typically when multiple threads of control, especially when they're, they're uh, mapped to the underlying processor cores, so you have multiple threads on multiple cores, start trying to access data that's not properly protected. So the, the key term here is shared mutable state. So shared mutable state is, you know, the devil incarnate, right? It's in a parallel program. Shared mutable state's fine in some contexts, but when you start trying to write parallel programs, shared mutable state will get you into all kinds of trouble. So either don't use it, just say no to shared mutable state, or protect it. Now, I haven't talked a whole lot about how to protect it, so the best thing for now is don't do it, right? Avoid it altogether. And the best way to do that is to use the streams framework, which will partition the input in such a way where you don't have shared mutable state. Another set of problems is when the operations, and by this I mean aggregate operations, have behaviors that have side effects or induce side effects. And you can read more about some examples here at this link, and I'll give you some examples from that link. But these are often rather subtle things, and, and this also relates to race conditions too. So these, these two things are not unrelated. So side effects, race conditions, they all kind of merge together in terms of bad things that will give you a headache if you do them in concurrent or parallel programs. So the classic way to get yourself into trouble is to use so-called stateful lambda expressions where the results depend on the state, which could change in concurrent or parallel execution of a pipeline in a parallel stream or just in concurrency in general. So here's an example of where we get ourselves into trouble. So I think I've mentioned this before. We've got this program that has a unprotected piece of state M total, which is shared by multiple threads because we said dot parallel on this stream. And now this stream is running in parallel. And for each element, we're going to call T multiply. And notice how T multiply says M total times equal N. Well, M total, when used in this way, is an example of the evil shared mutable state, right? Because it's shared by these multiple threads, which you don't see, but they're part of what the streams framework does when you say dot parallel. And it's mutable because we're updating it. Every time we say M total plus equal N, we're mutating the value of M total. And that works fine if we take out parallel. If it's just a sequential program, this will work perfectly fine. But the second we say dot parallel, M total becomes shared mutable state, which is bad. So that's a good example of race conditions. And if you want to see how this works, just go ahead and try this program, try running it, especially if you have a multi-core machine, which you probably do, and you'll see you'll get really bizarre results. Any questions about that? So that's an example of a stateful lambda expression. That's a, you know, this is a stateful lambda expression because it's being called in multiple threads and T colon colon multiplies a method reference that references this method, and this re reference, this, this method is going to update shared multiple mutable state, which is bad. The other problem here is if you write code that's going to interfere with the data source. So if you have a source of data and you change the data while the stream is running, oh my God, bad things will happen. Crazy things will happen. 
So take a look. This link here talks about non-interference or you know, how you're not supposed to have interference. The inverse is where the problems come when you have interference. And here's an example of this. This is also a fun example. Try running this example. Wacky, crazy, bad things will happen. So what we do here is we, go, we make ourselves a list of 10 integers from 0 to 9. So we have a range of 0 to 9 integers. We box them up. We collect them into a list. So far, so good. Then we're going to go ahead and run this list in parallel. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to print out each item in the list in parallel, which is kind of wacky, but it should work. But we do something evil here. We call the peak operation. And peak is intended to be used as a way to peek at what's happening in your stream. You basically, it just sort of gives you a chance to take the input, typically print it or log it, and then peak returns the same input it got. That's the idea. It's meant to be uh, a read-only operation. But what are we doing? We're saying, hey, let's remove this item from the list. So now we're removing an item from a list in parallel using peak, which is not meant to be used in a way that modifies anything. It's not meant to be mutating state. So it's, this is, again, the, the shared mutable state problem. But now we're modifying the stream itself. And man, oh, man, is that a problem. So again, try running this. You'll, you'll be amazed at the wacky results you get. Should, you should get exceptions, and your program will blow up and give strange output and so on. So you are not supposed to be modifying the collections while you're processing them. The right thing to do is to use method references or lambdas whose implementations don't modify mutable state. You know, No shared mutable state. And then you don't have to synchronize anything. Here are some examples. These are examples from our search stream gang. And it uh, just shows you know, we return a value or we compute something. And this does not have any side effects other than to take its input, do some work, and then return a result. And uh, if you want to learn more about <clears throat> the problem that underlies all this, there's a great blog posting which says, why shared mutable state is root of all evil. That's the thing that's missing from there. It's the root of all evil, and it explains why this is a big problem. Okay, so I think that is where we're going